Hello and welcome back to the Franchise Growth Pod. This is Belle, Director of Marketing at AC Inc. And I am back today with Jordan. Boo, boo, boo. I want to come up with some sort of cool noise to like intro you in. How's it going? Good, good. I'm excited to be here. Very excited to be here. I love talking with you. Yay. We don't awesome. do this enough. Sad Panda. I know, I know. We have to spread the love between all the ACT members. That's true. Second, since you and I recorded, so I'm actually very, very much looking forward to today's podcast. Um, just to intro the topic for today, for anyone who's hopping in without looking at the title, which I don't think anyone does, but we'll see. <laughs> um, but today we're going to be diving into talking about how to build and maintain culture as a remote team. Um, and I brought you on, Jordan, because you're kind of our community and culture guy, obviously, on the team. And yeah. it's energy, and um, especially when we have new team members join, you always kind of lead the charge in terms of the bringing the energy energy on the, the voice note chats, which we'll talk about and lots of our team meetings and stuff like that. So I'm really excited to talk about it with you. Um, but first, I want to start with kind of our icebreaker intro question. Um, are you ready for it? Let's go. Jordan's ready. Also, my energy is off the charts right now. I've only had one cup of coffee. Your energy is giving half a cup of coffee. I, need to I actually have only had a half of cup of coffee. Oh it's God. like here. So wow, I called it. We called have- it. Well, should we have part of the part of the um guess episode with you? I guess how much coffee you've consumed. <laughs> no, because then I have to tell everybody everyone how much coffee I'm usually drinking. <laughs> like you're gonna get a heart condition. <laughs> I mean, half a cup is not too bad for the morning. That's not too shabby. Well, well below the quota. Well <laughs> below the quota. Well, well below, well below. What uh, what's the <laughs> um okay? So the question today is. What is the best meal you've had recently? And I'm just going to say right now, it could be an actual meal that you've like had out. It could be something you've made or someone's made for you. It could be like a snack or like a food item. Just curious, what can you think of as like the best food you've had in recent memory? Yeah, so this is actually going to be a pretty easy one because I just had this last Sunday. Okay. I went to this restaurant locally here in Victoria, Wind Cries Mary, a little cocktail bar. And they make their own tater tots. <laughs> and, it, and it is a 12-hour process. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. They, they bring in special potatoes. They peel them. They steam them. They let them sit. Then they half boil them, and then they pull them, and they sit them. And then they fry them at a specific temperature to order in these perfect little cubes. And then they put jalapeno ranch on it and caviar. Oh, my gosh. That's cool. And I was like, I was like, it was on the late night menu. We got there at like 10 30 at night, and they're like, Yeah, this is on there. I was like, tater tots. I'm like, I mean, I'm not gonna say no to tater tots. I don't care how classy this place is, I'm saying yes. Just to clarify, this is a very classy restaurant. So I am dying at the fact that you went to this very classy place for the first time and ordered tater tots. I think that's <laughs> Um, but that sounds incredible, and that sounds—it like- it was insane. Like you, I don't, you don't even need teeth to eat these things. Like they're, they're just oh, nom, nom, nom. Um, and they're they're amazing, and if, yeah, yeah. I just <laughs> you should ask me this question. I'm just gonna be thinking about tater tots. If I eat all tater tots throughout this uh, podcast, just know that this is how it starts. Okay, that is a really good answer, and also not at all what I thought you were gonna say. That's like a very unique. Who would have thought? <laughs> thought that's a good one i'm trying yeah. to think if i've had any really really incredible food lately um i've been making just as a personal thing that i've been making that i've been really liking is i have been really on my um crispy chicken tacos so i'm actually not sure if this qualifies as a taco if anyone's listening please correct me but i've been doing up like chicken salsa and rice in like a mix um, like shredded chicken and then putting it in with a little bit of cheese, a little bit of hot sauce um, into like a flour tortilla and then frying it on both sides, like folding it in half and frying it on both sides. So it's like crispy. And I don't know what that's called. Like, is it a taco? It's kind of yeah. like a quesadilla, but they're small. No, it's a type of taco. It's usually used with shredded beef and then you dip it in the beef sauce, but you fry it on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's a type of taco, and I'm not going to sit here and look it up right now, but no, I would, no, but it is a thing. It is a thing. Okay, and it is yeah. called a taco thing. That's kind of what I mean. They look like tacos. They're just crispy. Yeah. 
So that is something I've been making. And I don't know about you, but when I like start cooking something and it, it works and I really like it, I just cook it literally, you know, three. Oh yeah. I buy six pounds of chicken and a bunch of salsa and a bunch of tortillas. And, and I go like towards then and that's yeah. Like yeah. I'm gonna find out how to make these potato these tater tots. <laughs> and I'm gonna invest in a small potato company in Idaho and I'm gonna bring them in until I'm just sick of them and then I'll just move on to something else. That sounds like an amazing plan and please do keep us posted. Maybe like give us <laughs> updates on your LinkedIn about how this venture goes for you. <laughs> <It's so> uh, <laughs> Okay. So that was a great answer. Great, uh, great intro into the podcast here. Um, and just for anyone who's curious, we start with um, those types of like icebreaker, just like not even get to know you questions, but just kind of like fun, random questions, mostly because it's kind of a fun way to get to know people. And also if you've ever had any meal with me, I am the queen of just asking like really, really random questions that kind of like prompt the discussion and get everyone like weighing in on very weird topics. So this works really well as a way to get us kicked off and you get to meet members of the AC team and our community and clients and get to know them a little bit better. So that is why we, we open up with that. Um, but we are actually going to head into two seconds. Oh, it just yeah. blew into my mind. What? Birria tacos. Oh, B I R R I A Birria. Oh, okay. I am now. Look oh my gosh. Yeah. It popped up first thing. Okay. Okay. Oh, and it's mostly when you make it as like a stew and then put it into the fried top. And then you and then you fry it on both sides. It's like a whole process. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, well, we all learned something new today. <laughs> Unless you were listening to this and were screaming that name at us already, but <laughs> probably a lot of us learned that today. Um, perfect. Well, that's even a better way exactly. to finish off that discussion. Um, and now we're going to dive into the maintaining and building culture as a remote team. So the reason why we wanted to do this episode, um, Jordan, you already know this. I'm not explaining it to you. Don't worry. <laughs> the reason why um, we wanted to do this episode, though, is because um, AC is a fully remote team. So there are a few team members who live all on um, Vancouver Island um, in BC on the west coast of Canada, um, just kind of by chance, like just random connections that ended up being awesome fits for the team. We kind of have this very like always hiring mentality of if you find someone who's like, really great energy and brings a lot of value and um, is super on board with the mission. Um, it just, it usually ends up being a really, really great fit. Um, and so with that, like there's a few team members, what is there? Maybe four, three or four, four. Yeah, there's four. There's four. Yeah. There used to be five. <laughs> be back before I moved, there were five. <laughs> um, but uh, so there are a few people that kind of live within the same vicinity, but most of the team is spread out across um, Canada and the USA um, and pretty far, like pretty far apart. So we actually don't get to have a ton of those like in-person connection meetings and stuff that people in offices do, but we often get a lot of comments about um, how kind of aligned and interconnected and very just like on the same page our team is in terms of culture and attitude and energy and all those types of things. And I think it's honestly because um, right at the very beginning, Angela um, and Steven and a lot of the beginning team members really set that standard of like, how can we continue to make this team feel really connected, even though we get to leverage the talent of people from across um, North America, which is awesome. Um, but of course, you know, all that talent is great, but if you're not feeling that alignment and feeling that connection and energy um, from each other, it can get really, really tricky as you're starting to scale. And of course, we've done so, so much um, with AC Inc, uh, both services wise and events and all that kind of thing over the past several years. So um, Jordan, I want to kick off today with um, talking about Voxer, because I think this is something that we've heard a few people actually adopt who have worked with us, like a few of our clients have started using it. Um, so maybe just give people like a background on what Voxer is and kind of why it helps um, kind of keep the team connected and feel a little bit more um, aligned uh, per se. Yeah, Voxer, man, Voxer is one of those things that I remember when I started with AC, yeah. I thought it was kind of silly. Not, <laughs> yeah. not, that, not that Voxer is silly, but I was they're like, yeah, we use Voxer to leave messages. And I go, well, we have this other places. Like you can leave a voice message on Facebook Messenger. Yeah, yeah, totally. You do this on WhatsApp. The difference with Voxer is it's a leave a voice message first mentality. It's like a little walkie talkie. And yeah. you can leave text, but the whole idea is it embodies or it empowers you to use your voice to leave messages. Yeah. And you know, when I talk with clients that we work with, I'm like, hey, listen, as you onboard, you're gonna wanna get this, and they don't quite understand it, which understandably so. Yeah, yeah. But there's something to be said about hearing someone's voice mm -hmm. yeah. and about keeping in touch. Like as a remote company, if you're sending texts, like I'm just reading something. Yeah. Right. There's nothing to it. But if I hear your tone, if I hear your excitement, if I hear your panic, 
you know <laughs> these, <laughs> these are things that we hear um yeah. you know if if you hear that it just connects you more with that that, yeah. that person that conversation that you're, you're now in it um and, and i'm not going to hear a message i'll be like listen I, I can't get into the app uh can you help me out i'm not going to be like yeah, or, be right back <laughs> you know there's 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 like i feel i feel like they're talking to me and i, I got to get back to them as fast as possible and i want to you know sometimes when you hear that you go like hey listen don't worry i got you covered well it, it's it's just it's a conversation to be had with someone that you just don't get any other way and that voxer idea is different than other apps that offer it as a byproduct this is the focal point of it yeah. And it is free. Um, I mean, a few of us have the the subscription, but um, it is totally free. And, and again, we do use it with clients, but I think for the team stuff too, I totally agree with you. I think hearing someone's voice is a really big part of um, getting to maintain a bit of more of that personal connection and like getting to know someone as a human um, while also um, uh, like with something like Slack or whatever. And we still use, you know, email constantly and all those things as well, but just making sure that there's that constant kind of voice that you're attaching to someone I think really does help humanize people and make us feel like more more like we are in the same space or we are getting to know someone on a on a human level um and kind of brings you into the conversation I know that's so cheesy um and two things we use Voxer for specifically so we use it for day-to-day communication for just letting people know about you know edits that were made on a document or supporting a client I'm looking for some feedback or whatever um but we do two things uh, one on Monday to kick the week off and then one on Friday to kind of finish the week strong um and we've actually again we've had a couple people kind of adopt similar things with um their app and so I thought we would share it because I find this is really like using Boxer for this type of thing is really, really valuable to um, make sure that there's like routine in it. So it gets people using the tool that you want them to use um, without it feeling overwhelming. Like you don't need to send a daily update every single morning or something. But for Mondays, um, so I'll tackle Mondays and then maybe you can describe what we do on the Fridays because that's a newer one that we've added in in the past year. Yeah. Um, but kind of ever since AC started, we've always done a Monday um, holding each other accountable, like what it is we're really, really focusing on getting done this week. It's often the stuff that maybe people are like, oh, I got a lot of other things on the list, but this really is yeah. my priority this week. Or I've got a bit of a challenge here. I'm really going to focus on solving it this week. And we call that our don't be shitty or our DBS. So if you hear us say DBS, it's our don't be shitty Monday morning check-in and the whole team, we leave a, a, a voice and typically a voice note, not a text note, but an actual voice note in Voxer in that chat. Um, and we do, and we say like, Hey, like happy Monday, you know, hope everyone had a great weekend. Sometimes you give a little recap. Sometimes people are like, Hey, I got to do this this weekend or whatever. So you kind of get a little check-in. Um, and they're kind of typically, you know, less than a minute, like it's not anything crazy. And then you just say like my DBS this week is I'm working on, um, you know, like one of my DBSs this week is to do some specific optimizations on our website or whatever. So that would be something I would put on there. And it's something I really want to make sure I'm kind of held accountable to. So there's a lot of other things that are, you know, taking, taking up my brain space, but that is definitely something I really want to get done this week. It's a bigger project. Um, and what that does is it kind of adds that like kicking off the Monday feeling and you've heard from the team. So everyone gets to listen to everyone in the, in the Monday morning and get to hear what everyone's working on. So it adds that kind of, we all kind of have an awareness of what everyone's really working on, even if you're not typically working day to day with someone like you know if you're not a part of the sales team day to day then getting to know kind of what the sales team is working on this week is helpful um so that's been really cool and we have had a few people say that they um they've adopted some of that as well and then to kind of end the week we do our, our feel good fridays um, but we've just kind of recently added that so jordan do you want to describe kind of what we do for that one yeah the feel good friday is i actually quite enjoy it you know what i i, I don't know about you Bo, but sometimes i'll have weeks where i'm just like I really got to dig deep for something that I think is worthy of sharing with the team. You know, it's like a feel good Friday. What have you, what have we done? It doesn't even be something I've done or you've done. It's something that we have done. Yeah. Um, that we want to give a quick shout out to a quick celebration, something you're proud of, something you're happy of. Yeah. Yeah, and something, you're for, yeah. and something, th something you're thankful for. And it's, it's, it's a big contrast in the best way possible to what we do on Monday, Monday, I'm so glad that just uh, speaks to vo the, the Voxer. Like I'm go I could type in DBS for the week, make sure the round table switch over to the new system goes well. Or I could leave a message being like, Hey, hope everyone had a good, dip, uh, good weekend. Especially like, I remember I was like, Hey, happy father's day to the guys in the group like <laughs> back in June. And yeah. you're like, it was like, I hope, I hope you guys got spoiled by your fam. 
here's my DBS. I was like, I'm not looking forward to this one. Uh, you know, like you just, you, you let it out and it's 30 seconds and you're done. And on Friday, you know, the Friday ones go a little longer because you kind of, you will rant a little more when you're thankful for something. But, you know, like we were talking about the new website. I'm like, you know, feel good Friday. I'm like, man, I'm feeling good about the new website because yeah. to what, to me, that is just such a quantum leap in our game. And this is what it's, this is, this is, uh, this is embodies everything that we've been working for. And it's, I'm so glad that we're here together. Thank you. And this is awesome. And, and you, and you give a shout out to bell for making the website. So like you give out your shout outs, you say you're thankful and it feels good. And sometimes you have to look for it and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being like, Ooh, I had a bit of a grind of a week and I'm, but there's something, there's always something there, even if it's yeah. little and it just kind of keeps you grounded. And it, it, again, it, it makes you that culture aspect is huge saying you're accountable to your teammates at the beginning of the week and then being thankful for what you guys have done in that week as little uh, as small or as big as it can be is huge yeah. and it is those touch points the people that don't um that don't necessarily get to talk to each other as much um and it's it's you know, i get to hear what you're thankful for what you've been doing and we even ask sometimes a little a little personal thing mm. you know and it's it's just a way to just yeah you, you you get a little personal with that. You get the touch points with your team members who wouldn't otherwise do it. And it's something for you to even follow up. Like I remember Raj mentioned something about his, um, one of his kids ages ago. And I just remember being like, Hey man, how did that go? And he was like, yeah, went really man. well. And it's like, you know, I wouldn't have known that had we not had that. And that was an, an effortless conversation to continue. Yeah. Oh, I love that. You said that so wonderfully. And I have a whole new appreciation for our feel good Friday chats. That's hilarious. Um, I like it. It's sort of funny. Like it, it, when I'm the first person on those, I'm always ripping on the East Coast people. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm as far west as you can go. Any farther, I'm hitting Hawaii. So <laughs> I'm like, then I'm like, hey, East Coast, wake up, get up, let's go. All right. If I'm leaving the first one on, <laughs> I'm like, you're doing it wrong. There is a bit of a debate as to whether people leave them in the morning on Fridays or at the end of day on Fridays. There is a little bit of a fight between. <laughs> Team as to when is the appropriate time to send the message but that's a that's a conversation for the, another time but yeah I think and I think kind of building off of that um I want to dive a little bit into some of the um you mentioned touch points like having more and more touch points with the team and kind of getting to hear from the team and like leverage the team a little bit so I want to talk about the think tanks that we do every week because this is um kind of similar like we we want to make sure we're building um enough calls and and um uh channels chances for the team to align and get on the same page and leverage one another um, and lots of opportunities for that without making it, you know, like a thousand calls, like every week where just the whole team has to get on and we talk about something kind of small or whatever. So we're really all about making sure, especially Zoom calls, because we have that Boxer chat and all the different chats and people can contact each other individually and all of that for more day to day. We really try to make sure the meeting time is like used really effectively. So um, our think tanks that we have every Wednesday, um, that's a chance for all of our advisors and the same sales team. Um, and I joined as well, being more on the marketing side and helping some of our clients with things like messaging and stuff. I joined those as well. So we've got kind of all the, the client connecting um, team members all get together on a call every Wednesday and we get to problem solve things that are happening within our own client relationships or performance group coaching or one-on-one um, -on -one executive coaching for all of those types of situations, we get to kind of problem solve as a team. So getting to kind of hear from other team members and again, going back to the touch point thing, I think that's so important. Um, but then also making sure that the times that you are then on a Zoom call face-to-face, -face, you're kind of making the most of it with like a plan. So every Wednesday we hop on and it is a bit of a longer call, but we know that we're getting a lot of value from it because the point is we want to make sure, you know, if we have a client who's struggling, you know, maybe a coach is really trying to um, build some more credibility with some of their legacy franchisees and is kind of struggling with that. And we want to kind of bounce some ideas off of the other team members who maybe have dealt with that, or, you know, a bunch of our team members have been amazing franchisees and coaches. And so getting to go, oh yeah, you know, I struggled with that and here's what happened. And so that is something that's kind of an example of how Voxer kind of boosts that and like helps it, but we also still make sure we have those meetings times to kind of um accomplish like more uh dynamic like conversation based things like that um and you've been on the think tanks as well like you join most times anyways for sure i try to i think it's i think it's probably the most Im um impactful 90 minutes i get yeah um of the week and it's you know to your point earlier it's not 30 meetings a week between the yeah. team yeah. i think a lot of companies that do that that's more of the illusion Mm. of being a productive team when you don't need to like we we were on it for 90 minutes and it's like hey bell bell came up with a system uh everyone's got an issue is it a one two or a three 
Yeah. Everyone does this or this, and oh, some people, yeah, sometimes funny. some people do this, and you know, like, <laughs> and when that happens, you're like, okay, so we're going to prioritize. There's people yeah, yeah. that are there's people out there that are treading water. There's people there that are floating on a door. There's people that are in the boat, and we're just going to make sure we, we help the people that are kind of drowning there with a with a specific issue, and you know, our team is is. It, there's a wide set of skills. And when you bring an issue that you're having with a performance group, with a client, with a franchisee, with a franchisor, with a vendor, we all have different experience and we all have a lot of it. Yeah. And so what you get with those think tanks is three or four different approaches to the same issue, but they're all coming from a place where we've dealt with it we've done something we've 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 had that experience and this is how i did it this is what didn't work this is what did work and to hear some and because we're so we have such a trust in our culture because of these dvs's and these feel good fridays no one that hops on there is afraid to speak up i'm having a problem with this yeah being that kind of vulnerable like being able to bring up issues or challenges or wins i mean we also do things like yeah. to showcase as you said showcase a template or a system and things like that as well so i think that is really key that showing vulnerability and being able to bring that to the team yeah. and not I, worried about like someone's gonna give me some flack someone's like yeah. i'm gonna get in trouble for this oh, i man. should know this and i don't like the, none of those things happen yeah and if you can sit there and bring a problem every week, which everyone does, everyone brings a challenge, our problem is challenge. Like that just shows that your, your perspective and your position is better than average because you can sit there and be like, yeah, I'm having this problem. A lot of people can't do that. Not mm-hmm. crushing it. Yeah. Crushing it. High-fiving everyone. Like, no, no, we all have a challenge. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and if the rare time we know, then we talk about a win because we don't want people to not be a part of the think tank or this is the win that we've had. And th- those wins spark just as much conversation um, than, than the challenges do. They're, they're yeah, great. Yeah. And I, I do also, so two things I just want to bring up there, because I think, first of all, I want to make sure it's really clear, like we didn't, you know, come up with these meetings or something and they were perfect from the beginning. Far from it. We've adjusted a lot of these things a lot of times. And I think that's also real to say, right? It's good to be realistic when you're talking about, you know, we, we haven't mastered <laughs> this thing right off the bat or anything, but we've kind of adjusted it and action equals growth, right? We took action and we started these meetings. Um, we started them a certain way and we've adjusted them like a lot over over the, the, the years. And um, one of the big ones that I remember us having uh, as a bit of a challenge is we were struggling with kind of the best way to um, make the best use of a bigger meeting like that, because there's obviously lots of things, as you said, everyone has a win, everyone has something they've worked on, they want to show, or everyone has um, a challenge they want, they want to get some thoughts on. Um, but being able to kind of best manage that time, we definitely did struggle with, with that for a while and kind of tried a couple ways of how to um, prioritize like the right things in that time. And then also making sure that everyone's coming with something and being prepped and all of that. So it definitely didn't, you know, it wasn't perfect right, right off the bat. So if you are, if you have team meetings or certain types of structures that you're kind of playing with and seeing how it's going to get, you're going to get the most value as a more remote or, or like hybrid team. Um, that's so real. <laughs> so, so real. And so real. Yeah. Um, and one thing we did, um, and you brought up is the ranking system. So I'd really suggest this, um, for any kind of team meeting or even coaching a franchisee type thing, this could be valuable, but, um, we came up with this, um, kind of ranking system. So initially it was just a, like, how big is your issue? And we kind of would just, you know, say, well, mine's pretty big or mine's pretty small or whatever. And then we eventually just started um, holding up fingers on the call because we were all on zoom of what was the priority. So three being like highest priority. So if anyone has a three, we know that that needs to be addressed, you know, right in this call, we would probably want to start with them. A two is kind of, I have something that I would like to cover, but it's not urgent. And then one would be like, oh, I have, you know, a resource to show you guys, or I have a win to share or more just an update, like not any huge, huge issue. So um, having some sort of like ranking system for issues or challenges or the priority of, you know, what we want to go through. And um, some weeks, you know, some people have lots of the threes and some weeks, you know, they're tens as we, as you just said. Um, but then lots of weeks, you know, people will go a few weeks with having kind of more ones or twos, just things they want to bounce off the team um, and not as urgent. And, and that's super normal as well. And as you said, like there's no shame or anything in any of the the things that are brought to the table. So I just wanted to say, yeah, they're definitely not, they don't start off perfect. Any of these types of systems, you adjust them as you go. Um, And that ranking system, I do think is really cool. And it's really helped us get more value out of that time. So um, so moving on to kind of the, the other type of call we do though, 
And this is, again, just kind of an example of one thing that we found works well. And we've adjusted this a couple of times as well. Um, so we used to do this more weekly when we were a newer team. Um, and then um, in the past year or so, we've changed it to be um, bi-monthly. So we set these up to be kind of one to two times a month. Um, and we have a time booked off on a Monday where the whole team gets together and we call them a jam session. So this is often around um, like a bigger issue that the whole team, we want the whole team to be um, a part of. So um, a while ago, we revamped our core values. And so we had a jam session around that. And then a while before that, um, it was about, you know, the way we did our quarterly meetings. We follow a bit of the traction model, which I think we'll do a, a whole separate episode if we want to um, talk about how we've adjusted that model to, to work for our team. But um, we talked a lot about, you know, how we wanted to do our quarterly meetings. That was a, a jam session. So those kind of bi-monthly jam sessions, as we call them, is really just getting a lot of um, that team feedback on more internal things. So less client facing, more internal. Um, and you've been a part of those, like as they've kind of evolved over time as well, what have you noticed kind of lately that's been um, maybe valuable for someone who maybe also has team meeting structures like that, where they want to get the team together, but they want to make sure it's really valuable. Yeah, it's, it's funny because the, the underlying idea of them has never really changed. Like we're getting yeah, the yeah. team included with every decision. We're talking about what are you guys, what are you feeling? What are you, what are you thinking? The, yeah. That's never changed, but we are now focused more as a company. So I feel like it's it's not as broad anymore. We're not talking yeah. about this, that, and the other. We're talking about this and how we can get there. Um, the jam sessions, yeah, they used to be weekly. <laughs> I do remember there almost being a tipping point where we were like, it wasn't anything bad, but it was like, I don't think we need to do these. Yeah, Every and then, week. I think it also happened when we got a lot more clarity on what we got the most value in like an hour team discussion on. And that, again, goes to anything where you're building culture and wanting to make sure the team is really involved. It all does come down to you can't be afraid to be like, we're going to adjust this or we want to make sure this works the best for everyone. So we're going to maybe revamp how we do our like I said, like the ranking system of the priorities of the discussion, or we're going to switch up maybe how often, and not that you switch it, you know, every two weeks, you're like, no, we're changing it. No, we're changing. Not that that's the case, but I think that it, you're so right. Like when we got more clarity on what was the best value out of that time altogether, it really did shift. And all of a sudden they became way more, um, uh, feedback based. And we would do these jam boards. Um, <laughs> jam boards is a, a Google tool that allows you to kind of put together a bunch of sticky notes on a, 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 a virtual like piece of paper type thing if you haven't checked it out it is free on google and it's actually really great we use it a lot <laughs> um but that type of thing it became a lot more of like gathering feedback from the team getting a chance to make some exciting announcements or celebrate some things all together but we didn't need it weekly and so we adjusted it and you know if it ever became a point where we find a different value for that that um meeting and we need to switch it up the the you know um, timing of that again, like we would. And so I think that also helps is making sure the team kind of feels involved and a part of those decisions and the why behind it, um, is, has been really, really helpful as well. Cause you don't often get it perfect right off the bat when yeah. you're building something like that. It's like, it's like a culture check-in to make sure we're all still kind of feeling the pulse of the yeah. company. And it's also a way for us to be a little more proactive in some of the approaches. Like I'm, the think tank's a proactive approach, but we're, we're, we're reacting to situations that we've recently had. And mm -hmm. from that comes a lot of progression. I mean, we've come up with some wicked resources yeah. um, from some of the conversations we've had on those um, think tanks. But the jam session, it's like, hey, listen, this is something we're looking at. This is something we want to do. Like, what are your thoughts on that? If we did this, like, let's, let's get the jam board out. What are the things that come to mind when you think of this? Yeah. And, you know it's very rarely that we're not all aligned on what we think about something. And it doesn't mean where it's an echo chamber. That's not what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. We all have different perspectives, but you know, you put us in a room and you get us talking about stuff and roll nodding ahead. like, we like this. This is why we like it. This is something that I would like us to look out for. You might be a possible red flag because we're so comfortable because of the culture we've built. We don't mind pushing back on certain things. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And I, I think if anyone does have those types of uh, meetings, like, you know, semi-regularly uh, having team meetings where the point is to really weigh in on more like internal things towards your system or your company um, and being able to um, create a purpose for each call, mm. I think has been really helpful for that. And as you said, then everyone at least knows as we head into this, okay, we're going to be talking about um, the edits to our core values or um, the, how we're going to be running our quarterly meetings, right? Like just, and again, not that, you know, 
leadership doesn't decide at the end, you know, but, but to be able to feel like you have this say, and you have this, this way in and um, your voice is heard within a, within a company, within any size company. And that's why they do, you know, that's why company conferences are so popular and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's all about making sure everyone kind of feels a part of it and feels aligned and still feels excited about the things that are happening in the company has been super, super helpful. Um, and that, yeah, having a purpose for each of those kind of team, like collaborative calls is definitely a really, really big piece of that. I am. No, one, that. one more thing before we go and I'll just make it oh. quick. <laughs> one thing that you're right about, like the leadership team will finally make the decision, but there's a difference between them making a decision mm. and then asking for your feedback and making it with a full circle. You're feeling heard and they still just, you know what? It's okay to disagree with you. Okay. Yeah, we're yeah. going to go down this road or, you know what? Thank you for your input. We never thought about it. We are going to go down this road. Mm. That's something in and of itself to be able to have those conversations maturely in a company and be like, yes, we're going to go this way, but thank you. Yeah. And we appreciate that. And it's not like we're not heard. We're just, this is why we're going to go this way. We can have those conversations and no one feels out. Mm -hmm. And I think that works with franchisees. It works as a home office team. It works as a small business. Like it really does that same principle of where culture kind of comes from is exactly what you just said there of the um we're at least feeling you know like we have a voice like we have a, a space like we're valued all those types of things that ultimately builds a, a very positive and, and healthy culture so um i hope if you're in the world of franchising and what, whatever your brand may be the culture within your franchise systems the units themselves have to be on point yeah so it does it, it's trickle down effect if you guys are rocking the, up top it's going to come down through the through the ranks into the Z's, and as long as they can be taught that, they're going to need to learn how why culture is important. There's lots yeah. of there's lots of industries out there where maybe culture isn't at the forefront, mm -hmm. but when you're bringing on franchisees who then have to manage their teams as effectively as possible, creating a culture is super important. Yeah. I couldn't have yeah. said it better myself. And I am so sad. I've been like trying to panda, that. we have to stop. <laughs> I'm so sad. But we actually are at the very, very end of our, our call time. Um, so we're gonna finish up. Um, we talked way too much, I think, about um tater tots at the beginning is where I'm gonna blame. <laughs> But thank you so much, uh, Jordan, for, for hopping on the call today and um, and doing this awesome episode. And I hope everyone got some awesome key takeaways. Um, and if you have any questions about any kind of like call structures or um, building that culture with your, your franchise owners and getting them to really understand that value and build that into their teams, um, please do reach out. That's, you know, our favorite thing. So um, thank you again, Jordan. This was Appreciate you. That was fun. Okay. We'll see you all later and go be awesome.